Okay, uh, we're continuing on with section 1.5, and this is on graphs of radical functions. So what do you think about that? I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get what, I, I, will you, you just, okay, let's just keep on going here. We'll get him shoot out of here. Okay, the vertex point of, uh, for radical functions of the form, uh, this right here, f of x equals a times the quantity b root of cx plus d to the e plus f. Okay, that's about as messy as you can get. The vertex point is at negative d over c. Why? Well, what you do is you set the stuff that's inside the radical equal to zero. Okay, well, you can, uh, if you set it equal to zero, you can get rid of the root, the b root, by raising both sides to the b power. You can get rid of the b e power by raising it to the eth root. Either way, you end up being able to eliminate these. Then, um, all we have to do is take the d to the other side, if you think of cx plus d equal to zero, take the d to the other side, so you get minus d divided by c. So that's the x part of the vertex point, and the constant at the end is the y part of the vertex point, okay? So let's do this one. It says for the function f of x equals three times the quantity two x minus one to the two fifths plus eight, what is the location of the vertex point, and what x will make the function equal to 20? Well. Uh, here's the function again. Now we can write it with uh, radicals and that sort of thing as being, well, that's the second power. And the five, the denominator, tells you the root. So that's the fifth root right there. So that's another way of, of writing it. We just need to set this stuff underneath the radical, this 2x minus 1. Okay, we just need to set that equal to 0 and solve it. And in fact, even the squared, when we take the square root, that gets rid of the uh, square. Just take the one to the other, the minus one to the other side, and divide by two, so it's at one half. Okay, take the minus one to the other side, divide by two. You see, negative d over c. Negative and negative one is one over two, one half. And what is the y part of the vertex point? Eight, right there. Okay, is the constant at the end, so negative point five eight. Okay, now to find out what x value will make this function equal to twenty, well that means put twenty on the other side. So we'd have to, what, subtract 8 from both sides. That'll give you 12 equals this. Now let's divide through by 3 on both sides. And that'll give you 4 equals the fifth root of this quantity 2x minus 1 squared. Now to get rid of the fifth power, raise, sorry, to get rid of the fifth root, raise both sides to the fifth power. That gets rid of the fifth root. Well, 4 to the fifth is actually 1,024. And the fifth power eliminates the fifth root. Now we need to take the square root to get rid of the square. So we'll get 2x minus 1 on one side, and the square root of 1,024 is 32. And then finally solving this, add 1, you get 33, and divide by 2, and you get 16.5. Now we can solve these on the Excel sheet. So let's see, here's the original function. Right there is the original function. So let's take a look at the Excel sheet, and we would go to the radical sheet. And we could have done all those little pieces of things like where we took square roots and numbers and all that right in here on the radical sheet. But over here is a place of, uh, for graphing radicals and uh, dealing with these type of things. So let's see what we got that we need to deal with here. On this function, the a is 3. The b is the root. We'll see that's the fifth root right there. Okay, remember rewriting this with uh, uh, radical form. Okay, so that's the fifth root, so your b is 5, and the c is 2, the d is minus 1, and the uh, e is the power that it's 2. Well, that's the power, you know, not the root, but the numerator here, 2. So that's 2, and then the f is 8 right here, so that's 8. And let's see what it we have here where we got a graph that looks something like like this right here okay pretty weird looking okay and we want to know what's the vertex point well right there's the vertex point at 0.58 and I believe we had that as the vertex point and then we also wanted to find out what x value will make the y value equal to 20 so let's put a 20 in right here and we get 16.5 and I remember that one and let's check the vertex point too. negative it was 0.58 
and yeah, it's 0.58. So there's that, and we did that on Excel. All right, so um, I think that's all we have with, with that particular one, so we should be in pretty good shape. So this will be a, a quick video then, that's all there is to this one. Okay, okay, you don't have to be all excited about it being a short video. Just, just, just stop it, will you? Okay, jeez.